Hello everybody, this is Manu S and I'm back here with another Legends of Runeterra deck tech for you guys. Today I want to talk to you about scouts and just give you like uh, the breakdown of the deck, my thoughts and latest version and yeah, just show it in action later in uh, high EU Masters. Um, so yeah, before we dive into the deck, you know the drill, hit the subscribe button down below to not miss out on future content and now let's take a look at the deck. All right, so most of the deck is pretty set in stone these days, I think. And most people agree on uh, what the deck should look like. There are still some versions that are without Bannerman, but I would really not recommend that. Bannerman is just too good of a card uh, not to play. Uh, it's also really good in the mirror. It's really good against damage-based sweepers like Avalanche and Veil vale and all that stuff. And they are quite prevalent anyway and the opportunity cost is just very low like if the opportunity cost would be fairly high it would be more of a choice but most of the Demacia cards are good most of the Demacia cards are better than the alternatives anyway so why not just run as many Demacia cards as possible and Bannerman so I think like then the net uh, outcome is that Bannerman is notably a net plus to the deck um, even if there maybe is one or two build shorter cards that could be slightly better than the Demacia cards, like for example Butcher is obviously straight up better than Citria, for example, but it's like a very marginal thing and the main, the primary purpose of Citria, Citria does the same as Butcher, just, Butcher is just better later in the game in random situations that it's not primarily in the deck for that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, let's take a look. Um, so... Basically, we have six one drops, Citria and Tracker. I don't think you want more one drops than six, really, because um, too many one drops has a lot of diminishing returns and the deck isn't hyper aggressive. So, six is a good number to have one as often as possible while avoiding drawing multiples as much as possible. Also, the additional options are all not very great uh, and or non Demacia cards, which is not worth it for your Bannerman. So six a good number. Citria isn't great, but she kind of does the job. And since you're an aggressive deck and you want to curve out, and obviously Bannerman especially makes you want to go uh, at least one unit each turn, um, meaning that um, having a one drop is pretty beneficial. And that's why Citria is still worth running, despite her not being that great. Um, like She's fine. She's not bad, but she's also not like actively good she's just an okay unit that does the job basically the fact that she has two health as a one drop is kind of a nice bonus because that uh, matters a fair share in this day and age both against opposing one drops and a bunch of interaction tracker not much to say here just the premium demacia one drops even if you're not aggro a lot of like non aggro non control demacia decks still run tracker because it's such a good card it's basically like a, a one mana mystic shot that has different up and down sides to a Mystic Shot. But um, yeah, it's just a great removal, a great one drop, just a great card. Um, then we have Bright Steel Protector, um, another staple of the Masia cards, particularly good with Tracker, uh, going Tracker into Protector, especially on Attack Token on turn two. It's just super brutal against a lot of decks. And just very powerful. And it's also a great card later in the game for similar reasons. Um, then in the past, we obviously had War Chefs, which was a great two drop, but that has been shafted by a nerf and is now unplayable in my opinion. But Blinding Assault makes a decent uh, substitute. Um, for a while, I have been playing Hired Gun, and initially I thought it would be a better card. And um, it's sort of a more robust card because the one health of Blinding Assault seems a bit iffy and can be a bit problematic. But it is a Demacia card, so that's one thing that matters. Well, uh, going up to six uh, Bilge Water cards is the maximum that I would uh, recommend ever even considering in a uh, in an Allegiance deck, especially when the Allegiance card is so powerful and so much worse if it whiffs. But I felt like this is the closest in sort of what it does in the deck to Warchefs because I also wanted an, a two drop that has three health so you have a better diversity of how to curve out against stuff like Avalanche and stuff like that 
and it also helps with board control which is nice so it allows you to sort of control what's happening in combat which uh, is kind of what these decks want um, to push damage and sort of stay ahead on the board but uh, I've kept being impressed by blinding assault out of opposing decks and it seems like for example the um, Shadow Isles Freyot matchup is good enough overall that blinding assault being notably worse than hired gun because it dies to Balfies and Veil and stuff like that is actually not that big of a deal and and if they for example don't have a vile feast on two this actually even attacks for four which is pretty nice so um yeah the card's a bit more fragile but also has a high much higher ceiling than hired gun and if both would be built water it would be much closer but basically this is like a more consistent but also a less impressive less impactful option while this is a um, has a lower floor but also a higher ceiling type card and um, I think overall they're probably similar while this is like a bit more swingy and this is a bit more consistent but the fact that this is also the master card kind of pushes it over the top plus it seems to help a bit more in some matchups where it matters while being weaker in matchups that are good enough to not care that much anyway like I just mentioned so I eventually moved to Blinding Assault and have been pretty happy with it. It's another card that also plays well with Protector and, and like especially Blinding Assault into Misfortune is super brutal, especially against anything with units. They often have a unit you can kill for free with the Blinding Assault first attack, just pinging it with Misfortune and then you get another attack and it's just such a big swing and has been quite impressive. Um, then we have Prodigy. Um, another card that even if I wouldn't be playing Bannerman, I would probably be playing Prodigy instead of something like Petty Officer. Um, I think Petty Officer uh, is, even before it got nerfed, isn't uh, even that great in this deck since um, Challenging is ch just so good in these decks to sort of control combat and make sure, for example, your Misfortune can attack safely instead of having to stay home and not dealing damage sometimes and stuff like that. And yeah, Prodigy is just a great three drop, and it also happens to be Demacia, which is great. Uh, another note, by the way, regarding Blinding Assault, the reason nerf to make it rain uh, further uh, mitigates some of the weaknesses that Blinding Assault had before. And yeah, Prodigy, uh, the challenge is worth much more than the one extra attack point on something like a Loyal Badger. Uh, Misfortune, just the only Bilgewater card we are running these days, just... Um, a really powerful champion in the deck helps the deck push harder control the board a bit more makes the challenger stronger and the deck's quite good at leveling her or at least threaten to level her which sometimes just wins games on on its own that you otherwise wouldn't be able uh, to win then we have Grizzle ranger since it got nerfed it's not the like powerhouse it used to be but it's still a very good very solid and annoying unit and the fact that it has scout also matters for misfortune so for example on even you go turn three misfortune turn four grizzle ranger double attack with the scout and then on turn six you have like another scout double attack with like a quinn or a genevieve to threaten to level your misfortune in two attacks for example or you can even uh, if your ranger lives lives for some reason pursuit on turn five and threaten it there then we have the banner man that i mentioned just premium card even once it got nerfed it's still a super good card so still the kind of card that keeps these Demacia decks viable then we have the other champion Quinn decks also pretty good to usually threaten to level this in uh, two attack token turns or one attack token turn plus a pursuit and it also helps level misfortune uh, to boot and it's two bodies, so there's also some swinginess here, and it provides more value for Bannerman and Genevieve buff uh, on top of it. The card is often a bit maligned by people, but I feel like the card is certainly better than people give it credit for, and she's not so weak that she needs a buff or anything. Um, she's she's like not, not a top-notch champion, but she's like a very solid champion for like the purpose that she exists to be this, the like bigger champion in this scout deck basically that she's designed for um, she doesn't have to be like super powerful in a vacuum that you just want to slam her into random Demacia decks 
it's fine that she just kind of is a role player for the type of deck that she's primarily designed for and she does the job pretty well um the other option basically that some people still are doing either with or without bannerman is lucian um usually with senna not a big fan of that especially in a world full of avalanches it re makes you rely much much more on rangers resolve to not just completely lose the game and stuff like that and i also found the deck just is kind of less consistent and scales worse so unless you can kind of just uh, not draw aggro the opponent out you're in a much worse spot than with this deck in my experience so i'm not a very big fan of it and uh, while the numbers were closer between like misfortune queen and misfortune lucian for a while um they have long since shifted heavily towards queen misfortune with lucian being sort of a fringe choice um with most people agreeing and realizing that this is just a more consistent more well-rounded version with the warchef's nerf nerf we saw a bit more lucian again trying to sort of compensate for the warchef's um loss but even there it's still has the awkward avalanche thing that i mentioned and so on and quinn just provides much more power boost um on five than illusion does on two mostly just being like a three two that's annoying to block and then we have genevieve despite her nerf she's still really good and in this deck i think makes more sense than citria i could see running at one one of Citria in addition to Genevieve, for example, if you want a bit more top end to be a bit better in the mirror and a bit more robust against mid rangey stuff. Um, but yeah, the four health, uh, the loss of one health point certainly isn't irrelevant and makes the card weaker. But the card was so good that it's still a good card, just less of a like powerhouse than before, just a good card nonetheless. And uh, the nerf was pretty well tempered, I felt, and reasonably well deserved. And the card is still sees as much play as before, basically. So uh, it also shows that the nerf was probably justified. Like basically, if you nerf a card and the card sees about as much play and is about as impactful as it was before, then um, the nerf was probably right. Um, like basically, that's a good way to kind of um, check if a card might be a bit too good like imagine a potential nerf removing something like making it a bit more expensive or a bit weaker and ask yourself if you would still be playing it in the deck in your deck and if the answer is yes um, there's a reasonable chance that a card might get a nerf uh, in the future or at least uh, if they end up nerfing her it's not that big of a deal and probably justified if that makes sense um so yeah that that's also like some of the nerfs we had in the past that i wasn't too happy with where that bar was kind of not passed where the card was clearly dead with the nerf and i'm not sure if i like that nerf. sometimes there is no no good balance between like nerfing the card and keeping it still playable sometimes the card is either too good or not playable that happens but if your card uh if you can nerf a card and it still sees about as much play as before, then the card was probably too good. Like Bannerman is another example. The card got a, quite a notable nerf and still sees about as much play as before. Grizzled Ranger, similar case. Um, not quite as universal in as many decks as before, maybe. But otherwise, in the decks that it's primarily meant for, it still sees about as much play as before. So anyway let's talk about the spells and then get to some games so we have two rangers resolve not a big fan of the third the deck isn't super vulnerable to like the damage based stuff it can be nice in combat like in the mirrors and stuff where it also matters but against like reactive spell stuff it is situational and it has diminishing returns in multiples so two seems like a good number would not recommend running three i've seen people run three and I think you just end up with low impact rangers resolves a bit too often and your spell slots are precious and you have better options to use them on especially now that we have sharp side which brings me to sharp side center cards a really great addition to the deck that uh, the difference between sharp side and um strike what's it called radiant strike 
uh, radiant strike it's pretty notable this is a bit too marginal of a change sometimes it doesn't get the job done or the unit survives on one and then just gets cleaned up by something semi for free and stuff like that well sharp side um, usually provides enough of a boost both if you want if you need to use it as a damage spell to sort of finish someone off or just uh, being much more flexible in combat and against damage based removal and the elusive aspect even sometimes comes up nicely as well so um, while it is basically the same efficiency rate as radiant strike the fact that it's sort of two radiant strikes in one card that you have to use on the same unit makes a pretty big difference and the card uh, yeah makes the deck uh, a bit better in sort of tight spots where you uh, don't have that much mana left for stuff like repost but might uh, require a trick and a trick could be a pretty big swing to like your board position and your board advantage and sharp side provides all of that so at the very least i would recommend two in basically any list and i think especially if you're this aggressive three is almost certainly the right number and i've been pretty happy with three but the third one is a bit debatable that uh, depending on what else you might want like for example if you want a one of citria um, or a second repost or something um, maybe one of the sharp sides could be something to look at or if the meta game turns out in a way that you might want or need um, single combat again for something stuff like that then we have relentless pursuit that's another card that i'm not 100 percent sure on the third one the card has quite a lot of diminishing returns so drawing multiples is often actually pretty bad um, but on the other hand the deck has very limited tools mostly just playing dudes a bit of tricks and attacking so um, this provides an additional angle of sort of speeding the game up or um, catching the opponent in a choke point where they have their guard down and they would have the possibility to sort of properly stabilize and take over the game the next turn and then you pursue it they die where otherwise they would just stabilize next turn and it's too late but um yeah um i've been going back and forth between the third pursuit and the one of citria that i mentioned and it's very possible that the third pursuit shouldn't be here um i think people overvalue and overplay pursuit a fair share because when the games get tougher and things are not going that well for you and get grindier the opponent attacks interacts with you and you trade cards with the opponent then you won't have a, that much of a board and then pursuit is really bad especially if you draw more than one so um it's more of a tool it's kind of like deny in in the sort of two deny decks not decks that um that run three deny and depend on it more um also um yeah it's just just kind of a tool for matchups that uh, your time might otherwise be running out and the third one is i'm still not entirely sold on then i have one repost um some lists run two or three um, i think with sharp side you probably don't need more than one or maybe two and since i really like one back to back that i'm going to talk about in a moment uh one repost is has been fine for me um it just still does some stuff that uh, sharp side doesn't do also you want a certain density of tricks and three sharp side isn't quite enough especially because sharp side can be a bit low impact and also repose beats life steal sometimes and stuff like that or like stuff like big thermo beams and, and stuff like that so i think there's mer still merit in having some number but the card's kind of clunky so um yeah also with sharp side repose and back to back it's it's like and ranges resolve it's kind of a nice mix it's harder for the opponent to play around all of your options and tricks depending on how much mana you have and yeah then there's one back to back um the card's a bit clunky but it's still a super powerful effect even since it got nerfed and it's also the best play on turns where you just open attack and there are situations for example against ruination decks where you just want to open attack and win um it can be good against freeze effects it can be good to just sort of counter damage based removal mid combat and also deal extra damage in the process like they grasp a unit you back to back it suddenly your unit isn't dead and it takes three extra damage uh, compensating for the drain from the grasp and stuff like that or against like um pnz type burn cards like mystic shot and get excited and all that stuff or just opposing combat tricks 
And it also obviously plays pretty well with scout cards, so you get double the value out of a back-to-back. So I think uh, not running at least one is a mistake. The card is too powerful and swingy and free enough to run one, and it's a great tool on turns you open attack. So I would absolutely recommend anyone to run at least one. Uh, the second is probably a bit too clunky, and you're going to have it too often because six is expensive, and it is a bit situational. But I've been constantly very happy and impressed with the one-off copy. And once again, it's really hard to play around one-offs for your opponent. So um, there will be plenty of situations where they can't afford really to um, play with it in mind, and then you have, and if you have it, then you just blow them out. And yeah, it's just a lot of impact. Yeah, that's my list currently. Pretty straightforward. Um, just a couple of nuances here that I wanted to highlight uh, as opposed to some of the lists that I've seen. Um, but yeah, basically the third pursuit I'm very on the fence about. And honestly, I think I'll probably go back to the one Thetria, especially since the deck is quite popular right now. And in the mirror, pursuit is a pretty bad card, like particularly bad, while Citria providing you more punch, more quality in a matchup that is naturally very grindy because you play a lot of the same cards. It's mostly units on the board, so there's a lot of units being traded. And then having more impactful cards at the end of all this trading matters. So Citria is pretty good here. And I've been pretty happy with 2 Pursuit. And yeah, this is the list that I like. Um, I actually have been playing for a bit with the third pursuit, but I think at the end, especially with mirrors and other echo decks being reasonably prevalent, that Citria is just better uh, providing you a bit a bit more top end, a bit more punch. Yeah, that's the list. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you disagree and where and why potentially. Um, and yeah, um, you know the drill. I'll be right back in a moment with some uh, Masters games to show you the deck in action. So stay tuned for that. 